Welcome to Weekday Somatics. So we're going to start today by resting in silence for a few moments. So uh, come to a comfortable for you position where you are well supported so that you can surrender to silence for just a few moments. We won't don't know actually I I don't intend intend for it to be long but we'll see but set yourself up to be able to really receive the silence the stillness and then we'll just rest here for a few moments just allow yourself to soak in that silence and make no effort. Now let's take a moment to recognize the gift that we are offered by being here. can be easy sometimes to 
downplay the magnificence of this gift. So let's take a, a moment to consciously recognize what a true gift it is. Of all the possibilities, everything that might be happening. We are here receiving the gift of unconditional love. Notice how the conditioned mind is in the habit of lack perceives deficiency, nothing's ever enough for it. But we can pause and we can recognize what the deeper truth is. We can peer out into the world and see glimpses of all of the possibilities. We can just peer within ourselves and recognize many of those possibilities. The possibilities of delusion, dissatisfaction, hatred, confusion, anger, And we, we can see where they all lead. Everywhere other than here. So of all of the infinite possibilities, the chances of being here, present, receiving, practically zero. Something has reached through all of the clutter. Something has reached through all of the negativity, all of the desperation to answer our prayer, to bring us here. And it's no small thing, it's an enormous thing. We can begin to reflect upon our lives and see that not only has it brought us here now, but it has been guiding our lives every moment. We have never been alone. And when we peer back upon the story of our lives, we can see clearly if we're willing, if we are willing to be innocent and truthful and to have our hearts open we can see the truth, which is that our entire life has been a continuous miracle. 
despite all of our complaints and our kicking and screaming, we have been delivered to this ultimate miracle that is so rare. So let us give thanks to all of our teachers, to all of the support that has reached us through our lives every way possible. through ways that we understood and ways that we didn't understand, ways that were easy and ways that were hard, ways that were pleasant and ways that were scary, through human living teachers, through books, and directly in our own hearts and minds. Now the mind can sometimes grow impatient But let's be willing to rest here and truly receive the grace consciously, even if there is a habit of impatience that surfaces, let's surrender whatever arises so that we can really truly acknowledge the power of that grace that operates in our lives and is always operating in our lives so that we cease to overlook it, so that we can begin to recognize it more clearly in the moment, starting right now. So whatever objections arise, whatever impatient thoughts arise, just allow them, see them, be witness to them and surrender them. See how it is that through your whole life, if you're really honest, you can't take credit for any of it. The harder that we try to take credit for it, the harder we try to take responsibility for the good and the bad, the harder we become, the harder our lives become. The harder our lives become, the more we tend to grip, the more we despair the more we try, the more we endure, the more we effort our way from day to day and then hour to hour and then minute to minute until it's totally unbearable. So how much more are we going to do that? How much more are we going to 
continue to do those things that so obviously don't help us? And the answer to that question is, as long as we don't see clearly. So let us see clearly now. Start to take a look at what you call yourself, what you refer to Look at this one step at a time. And even if you think you know the answer, be willing to play along like a child. child have that same positive expectation that something good is about to happen, that some good secret is about to be revealed to you. Have that innocence of not knowing and positive expectation. Notice how that contrasts with the cynical mind. 
the hardened mind. And see how you've identified as that cynical voice that says there's nothing more for me, nothing good, because I know it all and there's nothing good. I already know the answers. I know all the answers and there's nothing good. See how that cynical, hardened, false self has claimed the throne. that you abdicated. See how you bow down to it. And choose to be innocent. So that you can see clearly really a case of the emperor has no clothes, but it takes the innocence of a child to recognize it and to speak that truth. Because we think we know the answer. I am consciousness, I am awareness. But the answer doesn't do us any good because the answer is just another cynical piece of information stored away in this false self. So watch the thoughts come and go. Ask yourself this question, who am I? Watch the thoughts that come to and try to answer the question and let them come and go and just be witness see how they are every answer falls short who am i Am I the story of what happened in my life? Am I the story of where I came from, my parents, my parents' parents, my upbringing, the schools I went to, the subjects I studied? Is that who I am? Am I my reputation? What other people think of me? Just take a look. Just see honestly. There's a there's another aspect to this cynical false self, it uses doubt as a weapon. It says, I'm, well, I, I don't, I don't think I am those things, but I'm not sure. 
Don't be fooled by that. Don't be distracted from the obvious. Just remain innocent. Am I what I think of myself? My own self-judgment? Am I my money? Am I my accomplishments? Am I my failures? Am I my shame? I know for a lot of people that's a sticky one. It's easy to see maybe that I'm not my money. I'm not my accomplishments. not what other people think of me. Shame, on the other hand, we want to cling to that one. Got to hold on to it. Not sure. How long have you held on to it? Isn't it time to really take a look? takes courage, but you have it. You have the courage. And you've got the support. It's no mistake that you're here. This is the answer to your prayer. You want to know. You really want to know. More than anything else, you want to know, who am I? Is somehow this recognition has dawned in you that without this, nothing else can satisfy you. So have the courage, take a look. Are you your shame? What's the nature of shame? Take a look at it in your experience. It has to be secret. If it's fully exposed, completely, nothing held back, then it's not shame. So imagine for a moment now being exposed.
exposed. And there might be some part of you that recoils even at that suggestion. Just notice that. You don't need to fix it. You don't need to do anything about it. Just notice. Notice that you're safe. You're here, you're supported. You're following the guidance to be gentle, to surrender, to set yourself up for success, receiving support, resting. So you can just acknowledge that all that's happening is just happening within your own awareness. Nothing's going to harm you. You're ready to be done hiding, hiding from yourself. So don't postpone it. This is the best time, it's safe. Just let yourself be exposed within your own imagination presently. Just notice what changes. And notice where you're still holding on, still gripping, still holding back. Be willing to surrender that too. Let it all be exposed. Notice how this support, even though you can't understand it, you can't figure it out, there's part of your brain that keeps trying to figure it out. What does he mean support? But even though you can't understand it, I can't understand it. Nobody can understand it. It's totally beyond understanding. Regardless, it's here. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. It's your very breath. It's intelligent, aware. It's witness to everything. It already knows. So surrender. Be exposed. Surrender to this benevolent presence. And notice how effortlessly it receives everything. It doesn't flinch. You flinch, but it doesn't flinch. Surrender all of it. Surrender how Surrender all the desperate clinging 
all the desperate attempts to get it right, all the desperate attempts to be worthy, good enough. If you want to know the truth of unconditional love, which you do, you have to be willing to surrender everything. Otherwise, you keep imagining that there are conditions. Say, nope, not that. But here, say yes, that too. Surrender that too. Surrender the fear of vulnerability. Surrender the fear that it won't work. Surrender the fear that the future will be difficult. Surrender the fear that you're not trustworthy. Surrender the fear that life isn't safe. Am I my body? It's another sticky one. Am I my good looks? My power of attraction, seduction, manipulation. What other powers do I have? Am I any of those powers? Am I my intellect? My knowledge? My creativity? Can you notice this gripping, grasping? Isn't that who you've really imagined yourself to be? All the other things come and go. This seems more consistent, doesn't it? This core dissatisfaction, fear, always seeking, seeking to protect or get. Acquisition and defense. 
Isn't that who you really have identified as? All the rest of it is more superficial, but here, more at the heart of it, it's just this fear, dissatisfaction, greed, never enough, never safe enough, never enough acquisition. Fear, greed. You have to see it. Don't just take the words, really look. Wouldn't it be wonderful to no longer be burdened by that? Part of you says yes. That's the truthful part that recognizes that that's what you've been looking for all along. You thought it was all these other things. You thought you needed approval, love, money, health, success. really at the heart of it there's you recognize that what you've really wanted was just to be free of the, the greed and fear but there's another part that says no you, you want to see that very important to see that because we can touch upon the direct recognition of pure awareness and still overlook what's happening right in front of our face, so to speak. When we inquire in this way, we liberate the stuck, dense energy, all those forms, we liberate them. And we discover within ourselves this freedom and energy, a great flow, an abundance within, total satisfaction, total contentment, total fulfillment. It's enormous, boundless, omnipresent, it's palpable. If you are quiet and sensitive, you can feel it vibrating in your cells. You can feel how expansive and powerful it is. But then what happens? You go through your day and sometime later you wonder, 
What happened? Where did it all go? You find yourself all bunched up again, wound up, frustrated, drained, depressed. Doesn't have to be that way though. So there's a slow way and a, well, there's the really slow way, which you have, by grace, you, you have been delivered from that to the much more rapid way. But the much more rapid way also is slow in comparison to the much more rapid way the instantaneous and eternal awakening and living of total freedom. And that's a choice. We are delivered to this recognition. It's given to us, it's gifted to us. We can't earn it, we can't do it. It comes from outside of us. But then there's a choice to remain true to it. So let's look at that. Through this inquiry, we get clearer and clearer on who am I and who I am not. We get clearer and clearer on what is our true heart desire. So the choice is in remaining true to that because as we move through our days, the old habits surface, which is a function of grace. But if we indulge the old habits, we induce a familiar trance of unconsciousness, of victimhood. Right back into the struggles of shame Fear, greed, black, nothing's enough. So the choice is to remain true to this recognition. It has to filter into the external world to be complete to be truly complete. We can recognize right now, take a moment to recognize this completeness here within, in this present moment, in this stillness, transcendent of all of the false identification. It's crystal clear, pure, effortless awareness, pure, unconditional love. Notice how that's true in your experience. You surrender everything to it. It receives everything equally. What you think is small and what you think is big, all is received equally, unconditionally, unconditional love, no judgment. This is essential. This is what 99% of people in this lifetime will not see. You are the recipient of a very rare gift. You have been entrusted with a precious jewel. And it's not a mistake. It's been entrusted with you because, because 
truth knows that you are worthy of it just by your very nature, because your very nature is not different from grace. But you have a choice to honor it or betray it. If you betray it, you suffer. The good news is you can always honor it, no matter how many times you've betrayed it. You can honor it now, always now, honoring this truth, knowing that this is the ultimate reality and that this unconditional love to be truly complete must be expressed in the external world, must be expressed through you, must be expressed in your life. Because the true satisfaction The, the totally fulfilled satisfaction is the satisfaction that is not only known in its potential, but is fulfilled in its expression. So as we begin to now transition from this inner inquiry. Let's do so consciously and with gratitude so that we can honor this gift. We can honor ourselves, our true heart desire. What does that mean? Take one more look now. See who you really are. See that it is your own self which extends this unconditional love. See that it is your own self, which is this power that receives and dissolves everything equally, no orders of magnitude, it's all equal. The smallest shame, the biggest shame, the smallest defeat, the biggest defeat, the smallest loss, the biggest loss, the smallest violence, the biggest violence, all of it is received equally. Now in this perfect stillness, it's effortless to receive this grace, the blessings and the forgiveness. It's easy to surrender, but we have a greater task, which is to carry that gift into the world.
And this is a story that's told in cultures around the world. And those stories give us guidance so that we can know that the this task of bringing this light into the world, into our lives, will not necessarily be an easy one. Because where there is light, the darkness can't remain. And where there is attachment to the darkness, there will be resistance. So let's not fool ourselves and say, oh, I've done everything that's necessary. I've discovered the light within. Now all, everything should be easy. Few are gifted this for a reason because few have the courage and the strength to carry out the task. But there's no mistake. You are not here by mistake. You are here because you do have that courage and strength and the conviction, the inner knowing and recognition of the truth of that light within and the truth that it is your heart desire to express that in this world. You won't be satisfied hiding that light. You won't be satisfied pretending to be someone you're not. You won't be satisfied allowing darkness when you know the truth of light. So as we begin to make this journey from our inner home, our sanctuary, where we know our true purity, we begin to journey through the layers of manifest reality, subtle layers to grosser layers. You can notice our subtler experiences of thought, inner imagery, inner sounds. Notice that you can be aware of these inner experiences, these subtle experiences, while also remaining aware of this inner light. Notice that these inner experiences do not extinguish the light. They don't diminish the light. The light is in no way harmed by these inner experiences. And you can begin to 
become aware of the inside of the body. The heart, lungs, kidneys, the liver, stomach. The intestines, the brain, become aware of the skeleton. Become aware of the bodily sensations. Notice that you are still aware of the inner light. Let that inner light radiate. Dissolving darkness. Bless your inner body. Bless the physical temple, all the organs and the bones, all the flesh. Trust and know that this is this is real, it's true. Notice the only thing that objects is a cynical thought. Let this light, this radiance, shine upon all the cynicism and hardness. And notice that you are that light, that innocence, that purity, that total non-judgment that allows even those hardened, cynical thoughts to come and go and see how they dissolve in that light of unconditional acceptance and love. And again, allow this light to shine within to illuminate the inner temple bringing blessings and healing to all of your body from the inside all the way to the skin so that you can begin to perceive your skin radiating this light. You might notice that this light not only radiates, but it makes your body light and buoyant. It's a very, very purified, refined energy. Feel this energy circulating, radiating, illuminating, blessing, healing. Wherever there is hardness, fear, lack, let the light shine.
Allow that light to shine from the inside all the way through the skin and into the room where you are so that you can be aware of the space within the room and allow that light to illuminate the room Recognize that this light is the purest power, the purest manifest power. Nothing can harm light. Light is completely invincible. You cannot cut it. You cannot burn it. You cannot extinguish it. Not even darkness can harm it because wherever light goes, darkness cannot. So know that this is the power that you are. This is the truth. Nothing can harm you. Nothing can harm who you really are. Notice that who you really are is at the heart of who you know yourself to be, that it's right here and that it radiates into and through your body, your physical body and into your life, your world so that wherever you go, whatever you do, this is the truth. You are safe, invincible. And that when you shine this light, this innocent, pure light, No darkness can remain. No fear can remain. So now your responsibility to yourself in order to honor this gift is to be aware and to continue to tell the truth. As you go through the day, notice if you are indulging fear or greed. And tell the deeper truth, allow this light to shine upon your experience, dissolving the darkness, revealing the truth. I am already well. I am already whole. All is already well. There is nothing to fear. Okay. 
slowly move your fingers to reacquaint yourself with the experience of the physical body. Be present, be aware, whatever happens. If you notice any sudden shift in the energy, a shift in your experience, a sense of being drained or being overcome by a dark cloud. Just be aware of what's happening. Be aware of how you believe the fear and the greed to be true. Slow down. Let the breath be gentle. Let the inner light radiate dissolving the false, false beliefs, false habits. Be aware of the breath. Be aware of the face, the tongue, the head, the neck, shoulders. And as you become aware of these parts of the body, again, just notice if there's any sudden shift, any provocation of negative thinking, gloom, despair, pain, frustration, impatience, and just observe so that you can see what's happening and rest in this pure light. Become aware of the back, the chest, the arms, the hands. the abdomen. Be aware of the buttocks, the thighs, the lower legs, and the feet. Be aware of what you are resting on the surface that you are on, the contact between your body and that surface. Be aware of the room where you are. And at your own pace, if your eyes have been closed, when you are ready, you may begin to slowly open the eyes so that you don't disturb anything. Momentarily, I'm going to be ending the recording of the formal inquiry. 
before I do, I want to say a few words as reminders. You've heard me say these things before, but they're important reminders, so really take them to heart. Many of us have become hardened in our lives. And so there can be a very significant contrast between our habitual experience of ourselves, the way in which we habitually act in the world, the way we think and speak, and our recognition in the inquiry. So we can recognize ourselves as this silent, spacious, awareness, aware of all, receiving all, with no defenses. And that contrast can be so big in some cases that it can be unsettling. So it's very important that you take the time to make the transition a conscious one. If you fling yourself into your activities, then you will be you will have a heightened sensitivity that can provoke irritation or worse. <laughs> so uh, anxiety, anger. So be very gentle, it's very important. And take this recognition into your daily life. And if you need to be, sometimes people have very poor boundaries in their manifest lives. And one of the lessons that people need to learn sometimes is that it's okay to have some boundaries in the manifest life to take care of yourself. Learning to take care of yourself is a really important lesson. So do take care of yourself. Take care of what you need. If you need to take a nap and you have the luxury to do so, give yourself that. Make sure that you stay hydrated, eat well. Not the way that you think, not a, in a rigid way, but in a loving, nourishing way. You know what that means, just nourish yourself. And if you find that you're irritated or anxious, and you can't just lie down for a few minutes, then I suggest that you become aware of the breath and just allow the breath to be natural and gentle just keep your awareness on it. So it's not a controlled breath, it's a natural breath. And just keep your awareness on that lightly. Let it become gentler and subtler and relaxed on its own without you doing it. Uh, for as long as is necessary. A few minutes could be enough for most 
situations. Sometimes it requires more, so 10 minutes, 20 minutes if you need. Something that you can do even during other activities, which is a nice thing about it. And know that everything that happens in your life is in support of your heartfelt desire. Your heartfelt desire is to know yourself, to know the truth of yourself, and to express that authentically in this world. So everything is in support of that. It's a refining process. It's clarifying that for you. It's showing you exactly where you are delusional, exactly where you are identified falsely. Everything, where, wherever there's hardness, cynicism, darkness, it's revealed to you. It's part of the gift. So when that happens, give thanks, don't dismay, surrender it, and use these suggestions that I've offered to support you in that. Also know that you're always in control. If you find that participating in the full inquiry every day is too provocative, then you, I encourage you to manage that. You could skip a day. You could tune in, but just lie down and take a nap during the time. Uh, just be gentle with yourself. These are very powerful inquiries. Then they're, they're not my, I'm free to say that because I'm, I'm not the source of them. I'm as amazed at how powerful they are as you are. So be aware of what your needs are so that you can nourish yourself and take the best care of yourself so that you can honor your commitment to yourself to be true to who you are to deepen in that recognition and to express that in your world and also uh, for any this is true for anybody but i'm mentioning it now before ending the recording for specifically for those who don't have access to the Q and A's. It's important to me that everybody knows that they have support. So if ever you are struggling and you don't know where else to turn, you can contact me. I, I don't want to leave anybody hanging in the wind. I've been there. I know what that's like. It's a very difficult thing. So just know that you're never alone. I can't necessarily answer your emails instantly. But if you're struggling, just know you can reach out. You're not alone. Okay. So thank you for joining. I'm going to end the recording now.